Reading four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. This is the part where we sing. Hey! Well, no picture of me yet because we'll have that in about uh, 25 minutes from right now uh, when we talk with our citizens panel. Panel? When we talk to our citizens panel, but right now let's uh, talk to a person we like to check in with every now and then. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Calpurnia, or California, excuse me. Uh, California is the lovely and attractive Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Lawrence. The uh, very cold Larry Bubbles Brown. What do you mean the very cold? As it is summer here. So. Oh, what's the temperature? It feels like 55. Mm-hmm. Well, it's 78 here and feels like 90. So Ooh. Yeah, so it's one of those days here in uh, New York City. But what the hell? I wish I were back in San Francisco with the fog. But I just, you know what I saw last night? I saw uh, Anthony Bourdain. I've been watching a lot of his old shows because he was really good. And uh, he was doing San Francisco. And his whole complaint was about Yahoo and all those people invading the city and ruin mm-hmm. and ruining it. Taking That's away, right. Take, yes. Taking away its flavor and its spirit, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and... Um, they were. He was in an old restaurant, and they said, we don't know how long this one's going to last because, uh, you know, the Yahoo crowd doesn't want to come here, you know. And and it was like one of those old, uh, down by the pier, one of those, I can't remember the name of it. I, 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 it was something's been there ever since I was a kid, I think, you know. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's not, it's not I, I, in a way, I'd love to go home. In a way, I'm afraid to. You'd be, I think you'd be horrified when you see how much it's changed, but. You know. Um, it, it, how, say, oh, change is great. I hate it. Well, I mean, change is great when you're changing things, oh, technologically, when you're changing things uh, in, in a lot of different ways. But aesthetically, change is not good. Like I, the first time I ever saw that change go on was my hor- when I was horrified. I came home back in 1980, 1979, and I came back home to work in San Francisco, and the, the ta- one of the towns I grew up in over in Marin County, and one of my favorite towns was Mill Valley because it was very quaint, mm-hmm. you know, and it had its, its own uh, feel about it. In fact, do you know that Mill Valley is the city? Uh, which Invasion of the Body Snatchers was based. Oh, really? The guy who wrote the book lived in Mill Valley, so he kind of based the city that it takes place in in Mill Valley. Okay. And um, anyway, uh, I just love that town. And when I went back, all of a sudden, it's like people from the Midwest came out and invaded it, and they decided to make it their home, and they put gingerbread fronts on everything. They made it too cutesy poo. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I'm talking about? That kind of cu- yeah. cutesy atmosphere you have there. So you probably don't remember the difference because you came out about that time, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but now it's being uh, now all rich people are moving in there. They're tearing down the little houses and they're putting up these giant McMansions. So it's uh, oh really, it worse. really oh yeah. even worse than it was because in the oh, old yeah. days, <laughs> in the old seventy nine would look great now compared to what. It well, the old days, the old wood woodland kind of home was the thing in Mill Valley that you went for, you know. Um, there were lots of termites, <laughs> you know, and there was uh-huh. lots of dampness and lots. Of, I mean, it's, I remember waking up one morning in San Anselmo with a, well, excuse me, was it, you no, know, it was Mill Valley. Yeah. Wait a minute. I'm trying to think. Hold on a second. Where was it? Was it Mill Valley? It was almost near Mill Valley. Where were we living? We were living up on the hill in, the, it was Mill Valley. And I woke up one morning and there was a scorpion under my uh, under my uh, pillow. Wow! That's how rugged the area was. 
Uh, and that might have not happened there, might have happened in San Anselmo. But nevertheless, Marin County was a rather woodland kind of place. And the homes were built on hills and, you know, nestled into the hills. It's, I, 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 I dread to go home and see what it's changed into, you know. Well, that'd be great if you came back, you could go to the, your old house, see what it looked like. My, my old, you mean my old apartment house? Yeah. I can see it on Google. You go to Google Maps, I can see it, see what it looks like right now. It looks the same. That that hasn't really. A lot of those things haven't. The marina hasn't changed that much, has it? Uh, not. No, it's actually there's a lot. There's a lot of cool places in Marin. It's all, always been, I think, fairly wealthy up there. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, I, uh, I I I I just I kind of dread it, you know. And I'm, I'm and it's all. It, I, you know, I was back there. When was I back there last? Jeez, I don't know. It was maybe maybe 2000. When did I go back to get my uh, Bay Area Hall of Fame induction? I think that's the last time. That was time. 08. Yeah, 08. Then I haven't been back in 10 years. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I imagine in 10 years a lot changes. I mean, you think a lot changes. You have to assume a lot changes. But then you go back and you go, look, everything's changed. Well, what do you expect in 10 years? I remember taking my mother back to the, uh, she was born in the Bronx. And so she said, I want to see my old neighborhood. So we went up to our old neighborhood. And by this time, the Bronx Bronx had become kind of like Dresden. It was like a burnt out hulk of, a, of, of an area. I mean, it was just terrible. It was just ghastly with gangs and filth and everything. So I drove her back there. And she said, what happened in my neighborhood? I said, Mom, you're 90 <laughs> years old. <laughs> You know, a lot, a lot changes in ninety years, Mom. Uh, ninety years. <laughs> Maybe she was eighty years, but it was it was enough that you know. So I guess I would do the same thing. I would go back and say, "What's happened?" But it's been ten years, you know, and ten years is a lot of time in the life of a, of a, of, a, of a, the cultural angst of a, of a city and whatever. New York isn't the same today. I look out at this skyline from my apartment, which is a lovely skyline. But they can, they built these pencil thin buildings and stuff, and it, it's slowly it, the the Manhattan skyline that we're, we were so used to, you know, in the '40s movies and the '50s movies, is gone, just gone, and it's been replaced by all these modern buildings. Uh, that uh, some of them are, are nice and some of them are just absolutely ghastly. There's one my wife hates. This, I, call it a, I call it the pencil building. It looks like a pencil. It's just that thin going straight up into the air. Yeah, I've seen the, there's a bunch of those in New York. I don't know what the appeal of those is. Well, I don't know. I think they're taller than the Empire State Building, if I'm not mistaken. One of them is very tall. And I think Beyonce bought the penthouse or something. She can afford it. I can't. Yeah. So. I, I don't so know that. Uh, what? I never saw. I never saw Anthony Bourdain. I never saw one show, so I don't know what he did. But everyone seemed to be uh, very upset about it. Well, <coughs> excuse me. I think he was very upset about it because um, number one, he was good at what he did. Okay. He went into places and romanticized them, or didn't romanticize them. I watched one last night he did on Sicily. And, and he keeps talking about it, how every time he goes back to Sicily, what a disappointment it is. You know, he said, the worst show I ever did was in Sicily, so I'm coming back to do a good one. And he comes back to do a good one. And there's, there, there are people like, he's going down to like catch octopus for dinner. And some guy in a boat is throwing dead octopus into the water so he can catch it. And he got, that got him really depressed. <laughs> and then, then they, t- they take him to a place where you, you can eat horse. They serve horse. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, they're grilling it and everything. And he's tasting. You know, and it doesn't taste bad. But you can tell he really isn't enjoying it, you know. Yeah. So uh, he was very honest about the places he went. And, and uh, it, was part, uh, it was part travelogue, but very honest and warts and all travelogue of places. And, and also a, a thing about eating in these places and what they serve in the local cuisine. And he would do uh, Uruguay one day and the next week he'd be in the Bronx, you know. Uh, 
Uh, the one I saw last night, the beginning of, was in San Francisco. And uh, he, he was complaining about the fact that, you know, the minute Yahoo and those companies decide to move up from Silicon Valley into San Francisco is when it all ended for that city. Yeah, that was the end. Yeah. And, I mean, it is pretty terrible. It is pretty terrible from what I hear. I mean, you live there. Yeah. In, in a rank, rank, rank control. But, uh, yeah. It's always interesting when you see uh, uh, successful people commit suicide. Well, yeah. Um, you, you wonder why they did, but success is no guarantee of happiness. You know? Mm -hmm. And uh, there are demons. Like, I would commit suicide. If I weren't such a fucking coward. <laughs> that to me was always the big stopping point. It was a little scary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it just, I, I'm, I'm a big coward. And I, I, I you know, I, somebody once said suicide is an acceptable form of self-defense. Um, and, um, you know, I suppose that if I weren't so afraid of dying, I would kill myself. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, what, yeah. have I, what have I got to live for? I'm 78. There's nothing to look forward to. My feet are numb. I have to go see a neurologist. Uh, you know, I have aches and pains I never had before. And uh, I, I can't do my life's work, which is doing a radio show somewhere. So what do I have to live for? Yeah. But I don't have the, I don't have the nerve to kill myself. Well, there's a... Uh, I've heard there's a... Could be a connection to the suicides and the antidepressants. Well, I, I I've taken antidepressants, and they, uh, I don't think I never considered suicide. Okay. You know, I mean, I've, I've always considered suicide. You know, they, that's one of the options. I think everybody has in some way. I'm sure you have. You know, uh, but you probably won't do it for the same reason I won't do it. You're too big a exactly. coward. Yeah, You're too well, big a coward. You know. Right. Anthony Bourdain, on the other hand, wasn't a coward. He was a man's man, and he did all the, you know, the rough and tumble things a guy does, you know. So to him, I suppose, I mean, see, I feel, I, I just, uh, he and Kate Spade pissed me off, actually, their deaths, because they were selfish deaths, because they both had children aged 11 and 13. Yeah, that's bad. How do you do that to your children? How selfish are you that you say life is so disgusting? I'm going. To, oh, and then Kate Spade wrote a death. Uh, she wrote a. She wrote a note, right? You know what the note read? Yeah, it, that it, one. I couldn't believe it that. It was one. to her daughter, and she said, "It's not your fault. Ask daddy." Yeah, ask daddy. <laughs> you know, what a I mind mean, fuck, that uh, is. yeah, that what a mind fuck. She's got to live with that for the rest of her goddamn fucking life. It's pathetic. It's horrible. It's terrible. You know. But uh, what are you going to do? So, you know, that's, uh, that's uh, you know, that's what they did. And I think it was terrible. And Kate Spade, the same, you know, she was terrible. And then he, Bourdain, I think the kid was either, he was maybe 13 or something. And, uh, you know, I mean... Just the knowledge that your dad committed suicide, you know, is enough. So I mean, yeah. I just I I I I I I in my in my own case, I have no kids to leave by behind. Nobody important. My wife has often said, "Why don't we say that if we aren't dead by the time we're you're eighty three, we'll commit suicide?" <laughs> and I went, "Yeah, but I don't trust you." <laughs> You know, if I'm going to commit suicide, I want you to pull the trigger first. You know, I want you to jump out of the building first. Because I want to know you've done it before I do it. But then again, once you kill yourself, I'll probably have something to live for. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't guarantee it. I mean, I never knew how Ava Braun, most trusting woman in the world, she went first. You know, how does she know Hit She never knew whether Hitler killed himself. Oh, she did? I didn't know that. Yeah, she went first. Yeah. Uh, she went by, she took, po she took poison, I think, and did she use a gun as well? I can't remember. He used a gun. Uh, blew his brains out. Yeah. Mm, you know. But, uh, hey, we would have blown his brains out if we found him, so, you know. 
he, he had no other choice. He made his bed, he laid in it. Yeah. But, uh, and, and then there, there are, this, this is a subject you and I love, right? Suicide. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's you're, you're, you're an expert on it. I mean, on people who committed suicide. <laughs> What's your favorite suicide? Uh, well, I always thought the Golden Gate Bridge is kind of romantic, but yeah. But I mean, what, what is your is is your favorite person who committed suicide, and the way in which? Uh, well, it's very. Do you remember Drake Sather? Oh, really? I, the writer. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, was, he was a comedian. Supposedly, he left notes all over for the police when he because he used a gun he said you're gonna find some brain spatter over here <laughs> and he left these little notes like that all over there <laughs> i don't remember him committing suicide but why did he commit suicide did he, the, if he uh, left enough think, notes there uh, must be a clue trouble why. with the ex-wife and there may have been some drugs uh, and again a highly successful person well my question is why would you commit i would not commit suicide over a woman i'm sorry it's not worth it. No. You know. It was suggested that that might have been maybe the motivation in uh, Bourdain's death. But they say that he and Asia Argento, which was his girlfriend, uh, were, you know, they were broken up. But they had a loose relationship. So they were still in contact and still friends and still talking. So they just say he was highly depressive and always thought about suicide and managed to walk away from the abyss many times. My favorite of all time, favorite suicide note was uh, George Sanders. Remember the actor George Sanders? Oh, that was a great one, yeah. Yeah. His suicide note read, I'm bored. <laughs> so bored. <laughs> he killed himself because he was bored. Now, that to me is a good reason. You can't argue with it. You can't argue with it. So you were bored. Yeah, I'm bored. Okay, kill yourself. Uh, it, it, not a bad idea. So uh, anyway, any other people you know who committed suicide? You know, there's. Uh, I don't think anyone tops that note. No, the so Bourdain didn't leave a good note. No, I don't think there was one. At least there wasn't news that there was one. Um, but uh, you know, I mean. Um, I just don't, I, I just don't, I'm just so afraid of death. I don't know if you have that same fear. Oh, I've always been horribly afraid. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, and as I get, I, like, I'm 78, and I just had my, my yearly checkup. And I told my doctor, I said, you know, these yearly checkups every year terrorize me. And he said, why? And I said, because I just, you know, when you get to my age, you don't know what it is is going to get you. You know? And I just imagine coming in here, <laughs> you know, and you uh, you taking a test and then calling me up and saying, Has something showed up in your tests? <laughs> right. And then it begins, you know. Uh, but I'm a hypochondriac. I've always complained about my health, and I'm probably in, knock on wood, better health than a lot of people I know, you know. So you're in good health, aren't you? Yeah, but like you said, as you get older, you just start to get all kind of pains and crap. No, we, well, you know, it, 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 Betty Davis said it. I'll say it again. Getting old ain't for sissies, <laughs> you know. And, and I'm, I'm here to tell you that. I mean, I, I have aches and pains. It's now every time I get up from a chair, you, you, there's that, uh, <laughs> that sound that comes out of me. That goes, uh, <laughs> you know, I try not to do it. But occasionally, without my even preventing it, it goes, like, uh, oh, boy, oh, you know. And then, you know, like a torn meniscus in the knee and a, arthritis, a little arthritis in the hand. I mean, this is all niggling stuff, folks. My ex-wife, uh, Ronnie, had uh, pancreatic cancer, for Christ's sake. You know, and I'm sitting here complaining about my arthritis and my torn meniscus, you know, so... You know, I, she you know she really had to go, and she's she's a hundred percent cured. She, oh, not cured. That, they don't say that. Oh, she really beat the odds on that. She oh God, did she ever? She, she beat the odds in that she could have an operation where they could save her life. Okay, called the Whipple procedure. The Whipple, I've heard of that. Yes, and it is so drastic in what it 
does and how it works and so on, it is so drastic that uh, uh, you, uh, the chances of survival from the Whipple are minor. And here she is a year later, Whipple surgery behind her, and uh, they gave her a clean bill of health saying that we can't find cancer anywhere in your body. That's great. Now, that doesn't mean it isn't going to come back. But the fact is that right now she's beaten amazing odds. I mean, that's what Steve Jobs died of, folks. I mean, you know. Yeah, and we, it usually kills you pretty quickly. And he was doing things like replacing body parts and everything, trying to survive the disease, and he didn't. Um, and, um, um, but, uh, but she, she looks healthy and stuff, you know, so she beat the odds. But it's a question of at what's going to get you, you know. So I'm, I haven't got my blood work back yet, but he could come back and say, there is something wrong with this blood work. <laughs> your, your blood is ink or, you know, whatever. Ink? <laughs> you're a squid. <laughs> I mean, you're, a, you've, you're slowly turning into a squid, and eventually you'll become calamari and die. <laughs> on Anthony O'Brien's plate. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. So I just, you know, I, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm just waiting for the bad news. So I'm still waiting for the blood work to get back and my PSA to be 2,000 and shit like that, you know. And probably it will come back and I'll probably be okay. And, you know, he checked me out and he said, told him what was wrong. And I told him about my numb feet. And so he gave me the, well, here was the thing. He gave me the num- name of a, uh, 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 neurologist saying that you know that it's a neurological thing and you just got to have medicine for it that'll stop the numbness and mitigate the the problem he said uh, it's all ner- it's nerves in your back you know being compressed and things like that as you get older he said so I'll send you over there I said I'm afraid to go there because he's gonna throw me in an MRI machine and I will not go into an MRI I have just this almost morbid uh, fear of uh, of enclosed spaces. No, those are, those are horrible. Yeah, so I I you know I'm going to have to tell whatever doctor I have. You got to find some other way to diagnose this than an MRI. For some people, it's just really easy. They go in there, zap zap. You take a look. You see if you can do a C uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call it a CT on me. Uh, fine, I can stand CTs. They're open up enough. If you can find an open an MRI eye that I can get. I'll be happy to do it, but, and he said he probably won't even have you do an MRI. He said he'd probably just, you know. So I called this one. It was a woman, and I got an appointment, and the appointment was August second, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm going, okay, fine, boy. It's a long time to go see a doctor, so I start looking her up in the, and these were doctors that were given to me by my doctor. I, I looked her up, and. Um, I looked at the reviews and they weren't that great, you know, for that doctor, but they were better for this other doctor. So I called the other doctor and I said, when can you see me? You can see me a month earlier. You can see me in about three weeks from now. So uh, I'm going to go see a neurologist. Gee, I can add that to my pantheon of doctors now. I have a uh, gastroenterologist. I have a urologist. (laughs) I have a a neurologist and I have a, uh, uh, my heart, my heart is taken care of by my, my, you know, main doctor who is a uh, cardiologist. That's quite a team of specialists. Well, it all gets very mixed up because uh, I was talking to a girlfriend about my urologist and then I talked about going to my neurologist and she said, aren't you already seeing one? (laughs) <laughs> and I said, no, that's a urologist. You've got to put an N at the beginning of it. <laughs> so now I, I've got enough people now that if they all want to scope me at the same time, they could probably see each other. You know, one goes down my throat, one goes up my ass, you know, one goes in my penis. Uh, in one visit. <laughs> yeah, all in one visit, and then they can all look at each other. You know, hey, I see you. I see you, too. You know, and they don't put you out for any of these procedures. That's the other problem. You would think they would put you out. You know. Yeah, that's uh, uh. the the worst one was the scope up the penis. Didn't put me out for that. You know. Ooh, that's yeah. painful. It, well, it, it's no, it's uncomfortable. It's not painful. It's uncomfortable. And what's even more uncomfortable is when you see the device they're going to use, and it's sitting on a table like a giant boa constrictor. Oh God. 
you know. They have it covered up a little bit with a tarp so you don't see it, but you see the man. And then finally they bring this thing out, and they stick it in your in your penis, and they look around your bladder. And the guy says, What oh, are they looking for? I don't know, gold. Uh, I mean, uh, I said, if you find anything valuable in there, let me know and don't take it out. But anyway, hey, we've run out of time. Yes, <laughs> with our ailments. <laughs> no, we're talking about people with suicide and illness. Folks, it's always, it's always a happy... Always uplifting. Always an uplifting, happy time when we talk to the <laughs> likes of Larry Bubbles Brown. Thank you very much, Larry. Yeah, like, App- okay. Appreciate it. Bye. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. And there was Larry. We love Larry. Everybody loves Larry. Hello, everybody. They should, there should be a show. Everybody loves Larry. Wait a minute. We had everybody loves Raymond. Well, everybody loves Larry. Everybody does. I. That's why when I heard that Hunter Thompson had heckled him years ago, I was very upset by that. I, in fact, one time I think I had the ability to book Hunter Thompson on my show, and I said, "Fuck him. I, I don't want him on my show." Anyway, let me uh, let me uh, turn off the music here thing. And let me bring up the uh, I, the uh, Skype or no? Wait a minute, where's the Skype? Come on, give, give me the Skype thing. Come on, guys, there we go. And I turn on the Skype. I don't know if anybody's going to call tonight. Uh, Patrick can't call because he's going to watch uh, the Last Jedi. I think. I think that was a movie he was going to go see with his friends at their house. Okay. And. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, Phil has his photo meeting tonight. And uh, actually, we, I got a piece of uh, one of the notifications uh, here, uh, or a not- letter I got was, I, I wish Phil were on the show tonight because I, to, I get to hear him eat crow, which is uh, a possibility. Anyway, hey, look, we do have always, whenever the, he hears that Phil isn't on and... I might be alone. Tom Yamaguchi comes to the rescue. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so you know, Hunter S. Thompson committed suicide too. Yes, he did. He yeah. did. And uh, we, I think we, did we talk about it tonight? I, I can't remember what we talked on this night show. I, I was, I was sort of like in and out eating dinner, so I didn't yeah. catch a lot I, of. I uh, think uh, Hunter Thompson. I think I mentioned uh, he did, did commit suicide and. His remains were put in a rocket in a fireworks display mm-hmm. and uh, set up and blew up and everything. And I yeah. think Johnny Depp was the head of the whole thing, of the whole process. So. And, and your friend, uh, Dr. Eugene Schoenfeld, was there among the people. Yes, he was. Yes, and he was. came back and gave you a report, or he made a report on your program. Right, right. Yeah, my, I remember that. My former shrink. Your former shrink. My former shrink. Yeah, he worked as my shrink for a while. So, yeah. anyway, so yeah, and yeah. Um, uh, and I just you know uh, so um, that, that's about it. anybody anybody dying recently we should know of. You're the you're you're <laughs> we should start calling you Doctor Doom or the Harbinger. Oh, you call me the Crypt Keeper, which I like. Yeah, the Crypt Keeper. I like the I like the Crypt Keeper. When people die, you 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 do a tweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I have really seen anything really exciting in the last day or so. We had some good ones. Uh, I usually go to Wikipedia, I'll tell you the truth. And Wikipedia usually... Uh, there was a NBC newsman, now that I think of it. Um, uh, oh, yeah, an old... Yeah, uh, he had been an NBC newsman, and then I think he went into private business or something as a consultant or something. I'm trying to remember his name. Yeah. Oh, oh, Richard uh, Valerian. Ver- Valeriani. Valeriani, yeah. Valeriani uh, did a lot of reporting on the uh, civil rights movement. In fact, he got into some kind of complication and ended up in the hospital, and he was doing uh, doing uh, reports from uh, from his hospital bed. So he, so, so Valeriani is dead. Yes, uh, yes, he died at uh, 85. Yeah. Then we had a couple of rappers I never heard of, both shot in different places on the same yeah, day. Yeah, you know, uh, I, uh, maybe it's I'm getting old. How old are you now, Tom? Uh, I'm 68. You're 68. You're that old. You look a lot yeah. younger than that. 
Yeah, we're about a decade apart. But there's a show that we watch every day called TMZ. Yeah, I've heard of it. And, and I like the TMZ Live because they're kind of funny and they kind of put each other down. And it's it's, but it's a gossip show, right? Yeah. And over on the left hand side of the screen, they have this whole list of the stories that are coming up, and I don't know any of the people. You know, and I go, right. well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, what, what, what is it? I don't know who the people are. I have no idea who they are. So, uh, let me let me turn this air conditioning up a little bit. If this will go up at all, no, well, I guess it won't. Yeah. I, I guess it's just too hot tonight. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we had another another news person, a woman from the uh, reporter for the PBS News Hour. Uh, let me pull. Yeah, I lost her name again. Uh, but she fell off a bicycle. <laughs> she fell off a bicycle and bicycle. died? She was in Chicago, and she fell off her bicycle and died. Oh, really? But she was in her 60s as well. Wow. And, uh, yeah. So, otherwise, the uh, talent manager for Dolly Parton and Joan Rivers named Billy Samoth. He was only 66. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so um, yeah, well, yeah, not too many well, really exciting ones. But when, uh, well, usually, when it's a rapper, they got shot. It's usually yeah, what happens yeah. when it's a rapper. Yes, uh, yes. The is. life expectancy of a rapper isn't that long. No, <laughs> they anyway, die before you even figure out who they are. Anyway, let me beg and plead now because this is the begging and pleading part of the program, which is very, very undignified of me to do but tonight we have uh, we don't have patrick calling we don't have phil calling but we sure need you to call so if you don't know how to call this program if you've never done it before you can go over to gabnet.net and over there on the right hand side of the page it'll tell you exactly how you can be a member of the citizens panel and do exactly what uh, tom is doing right now which is uh, talking to a washed up radio announcer so um I just noticed that Jeff is coming online too, oh. so it's you know it's a start. Yeah. Um, uh, let me see here. So, um, oh, tomorrow. Well, tomorrow's a big day for me. Why is it a big day, Alex? Well, it's a big day because my iPhone has been running out of battery power faster than usual. Mm -hmm. So I have to go down to the Apple Store mm -hmm. to the Genius Bar. Uh -huh. which I found is sorely lacking geniuses. And uh, they are going to replace the battery for me mm -hmm. within an hour or something like that okay. for $29. It's a new deal that Apple has because they were, they were fucking everybody over by ramping down uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the speed on your, on your iPhone because it didn't want to look like your battery was going bad. Right. So right. because they got into the middle of that scandal to make everybody feel good, if you have a, the phone I have and it's before the end of the year, um, uh, you have to do it during 2018, it's only 29 bucks for the new battery. So I'm going to go down and do it. You know. And so what's your model that you've got right now? I've got uh, 6S. Okay, that's the same I've got. Yeah. Now. Uh, yeah, and my, mine is uh, basically the same thing it's running it runs out of power but what i'm going to do is um i'm just going to wait till the fall till the new bottles come out and just get and just get a new one yeah so I'm well, gonna hold out how do you how do you buy them because you know i used to just plunk out the 500 bucks and get it have my two-year plan mm -hmm. and do it that way now the new way they want you to do it is you pay like monthly for the use of the phone I don't know. I'm on a plan with my. You remember my friend Karen, the the uh, climate change yeah. Uh, teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're on a plan together, and it's something like forty dollars a month for each of us, and it's uh, through T-Mobile. So I got my. So we got our phones through T-Mobile, and that's why. And, and you don't pay for the phone. Uh, yes, you do pay for the phone, or at least I do. Yeah, yeah. In we advance, pay, so we make payments on it. You make and payments I pay on mine it. Right off early. What? I actually paid mine off early. Yeah, but I mean, how much did you have to pay a month to pay it off? 
boy, it's so long ago I forgot, but uh, it's like thirty dollars, yeah. forty dollars, something like that. Maybe month. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then after a certain while, it does get paid off. Right. Yeah. 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 So said but the only off, problem but... is, what you got to do is you got to get the phone insured, because if you lose that phone or it breaks or something happens, you cannot uh, get another uh, 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 another. Uh, uh, you're going to have to pay for that phone. Keep paying for that phone anyway. So right. if you have it insured, that's taken care of. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, Jason, how are you, Jason? It's not Pretty Friday. good. How's it going? It's not Friday. It's Wednesday. Yeah, I took tomorrow off. Got to make some doctor's appointments and dentist appointments. Oh, okay. So uh, anyway, uh, uh, you know what? I, uh, you can, uh, I was going to ask this question. Girlfriend has, you know, we have a 6S, and she has the large ones. That's the large one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the other day, all of a sudden, she noticed... Her phone, the the screen cracked, uh -huh. uh, and it costs 169 bucks to replace the screen. 149 bucks to replace the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we have insurance. I think the insurance takes care of that, doesn't it? I don't know. I don't Probably. Think. Yeah. Which yeah. find out. Yeah. My screen's cracked up at the top right side, but it isn't is it much. They call this stuff Gorilla Glass. It's not supposed to crack. But yeah. uh, Marjorie's was cracked, and her friend who's staying here, hers got cracked. Mm -hmm. You know. So, but I think that if you have the insurance, uh, it, it, I, I know I pay eight, eight bucks a month or something for the insurance. Ooh. Well, and if I lose yeah. it, they give me a new one. You know. Yeah. Oh, uh, do they? If you lose it, I thought it's just if it's broken. I know it's for loss and for damage and everything. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I don't know why I got it. I think I just got it for the sake of getting it, you know. And I think she has it too. Sucker! Oh, stop it! <laughs> stop it! Uh, anyway, uh, give us a call, folks. We're building up a citizens panel slowly here. But thanks to Jason for calling tonight. And thanks to Tom. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sad that Phil isn't here today because I, I wanted to rub in his face the fact that Mr. El Presidente Strongman caved in today. Uh, well, he doesn't make it look like he caved in, but he, oh, caved, he caved in. Oh, huh? He's admitted he's a liar. What else does he do? Yeah. Well, what, he's what, a liar. What are you and, doing with the pencil? Oh, because it was the Democrats' fault. He oh. couldn't do anything without the Democrats, right? Yeah, but I guess. he was able to do something with, what's that? You know, he said, yeah. we're compassionate people. Well, where the fuck was your compassion for the last four weeks? Yeah, when, these... when uh, they signed that into a law to separate kids from their fucking parents. That wasn't, How the... that wasn't the nature of the law. What they're using is their argument, the Justice Department is. You break the law, if you go to jail and you have kids, your kids are usually sent to a foster home. Okay? That's the argument. But I think some people don't understand and realize some of these people who are coming over here and getting their kids ripped away from them went to a legal point of entry into the country and said, you know, I want asylum. Right. And their kids were getting torn away from them. They went to it. They didn't cross the border illegally. They didn't jump some fence. They didn't cross some river. They didn't do anything like that. They went to a legal point of entry and said, "I want asylum." And their kids got ripped away from well, them. Well, what I love is 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 Trump's description of the fact that if we Gosh. allow this to happen and we don't uh, we 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 don't uh, draw a line in the sand here, uh, these people are going to be coming over like crazy. We're going to have millions of people invading this country. And I always call this the bell the cat scenario. You know, that there's a, a cat outside the mouse hole, and if you make me king, I'll bell him. Of course, there's no, there, there is none. But nevertheless, uh, they make him king. And that's what he's doing. He's trying to strike fear into people's minds that uh, if we don't guard those borders, man, all of a sudden they're going to be 
gigantic amounts of Mexicans coming across, or uh, South Americans. And the fact of the matter was, we weren't defending that border for years and how many were coming across. Was it millions? Yes, Jeff. Yeah, and we're used to it. <laughs> yeah, Jeff. We need it. <laughs> I heard that Trump said that he wants that Muslims could be coming over here, too. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's... Yeah. Just to scare it up a little bit more. Yo, Muslims are scary, boy. You know. They really are. Drug cartels aren't as scary as, uh, as ISIS, are they? <laughs> Give me a break. Did yeah, you see yes. him hug the flag? Huh? Did you see him hug the flag, the American flag? Did he he hug? humped it. He didn't hug it. He humped it. Wait a minute. <laughs> Tell me about this, because I, I didn't want it. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> he kind of went it. over to it and grabbed it. It's so real. You got to see it. He left it's, a stain? It's, it's twisted. Did he leave a stain? Like, he walked over and he hugged it. It's like the man's insane. Why did he? Why did I didn't see that? Did you? Do you see this time? My mother would go watch it. It was insane. It was like, why is he hugging? Because my mother's blind to one eye. She says, "Is he hugging the flag?" I says, "Yeah." yeah. I think mom, the man is crazy. He's nuts. I think he, Alex, you hit it on the head. He's crazy. Yeah, the we haven't like, we haven't heard from you in a while. You know, my mother was under the weather, so I've been staying upstairs. So I was kind of tired too from going up and down. Yeah, but she's doing a little better. She's doing better. Good. I, yeah, I, her legs are bothering her. I heard from Shecky that she had some uh, some health problems, and I was yeah. hoping that everything was She gets down good. a lot now because she can't really walk well, Because out I, I learned with your aunt not to joke about that. <laughs> <stuff. laughs> I, I have a funny story. Can I tell you something quick, what she told me? What? And then I'll drop it quick. She goes, she believes in, like, dreams and stuff. I think she's a little insane, but she says, I think my time's coming because... And your friend and nanny were coming. And they, she says when they come in the dreams, so well, did they say anything? She says, no, but I'm thinking of them. I says, Mom, they're just on your mind. She thinks when she sees dreams that they're coming to take her away. Please do me a favor. <laughs> I don't remember they give her the numbers. I felt bad for them. I, said, what do you want? I don't remember they came back to say something. Are you said, still playing the numbers me. for her? I still do, 613. But I didn't play tonight. I six told one her three. She's lied. always been going with six one three. <laughs> I lied to you. Has she ever? Ha, has she ever won with six one three? Yeah, she actually did. It was her own license plate when she was able to drive. Do you believe she still has a license? I don't know how she has a license still in New York. Well, she's I'm, legally blind in one eye, Alex. Oh boy. Well, yeah, yes, one. Jason. I'm right there, I, I was totally <laughs> thinking about playing the lottery today too because. Yeah, I work for the phone company. My yeah. first job and my last job, the phone numbers ended both in, uh, what was it, 5132. Both, yeah, how often does that happen? You have two, you know, I did like five jobs today, and two of them, the last four numbers, 5132. I was like, man, I got to play that today. Yeah, and what happened? I didn't play well, it. Well, you didn't play it. <laughs> I'm not a sucker, you're, but... You're, you're, you know. It, it, it's such a, a drain on me, though. It's like, man, I got to play it. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you work for AT&T, right? I work for a telecommunications company, yes. Uh -huh. That and, might have and, or may not have bought... Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to say, that you now are part of HBO. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. It, it's not porn, it's HBO. Uh, the other day, what's his name? The guy who does uh, uh, Last Week Tonight, John Oliver, uh, mm -hmm. said in one of his bits or something, he made a joke about AT&T and a, about it being like bad cable service or something like that. And he said, how's that, huh? They just, they just bought this company and I'm making fun of them. So be sure to join me on another network next week. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Nah, that's not how they work. No, I mean this is what's <laughs> happening. You know, I've, I talked about the other day with the with the net neutrality thing going out the window. These but, see, companies, and, and I think that you're a worry wart. No, about I'm, that just, kind I'm of just, stuff. It's not. A, it's not a matter of being a worry wart. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm showing you what the true, real possibility is here. You know that that they by having no net neutrality now. Uh, isn't it amazing that but, each, but Al, Alex, each of these women, each of these, each of these cable organizations, Comcast, whatever, are trying to gobble up entertainment like crazy? But to, to a point, I agree. But also, I know some of our judicial stuff that we went into court with, 
we were saying because AT and T doesn't want to sit there and say we're gonna just we're not gonna let anybody else broadcast our channels because they even sat there and said we'll have a third party sit there and negotiate the price on what we're gonna sell these channels for, you know. Yeah, well, that's but, another source of revenue. But you know, AT and T bought look, oh, the, my, my, bought them because yeah. they want the the ad revenue. My, you're not going to get the ad revenue if you're only going to put it on only your service. Well, well, you got to put it on all services. Well, wait a minute. There is no ad revenue in uh, HBO. It's uh, it's but, subscriber but that's revenue. HBO. It's not subscriber HBO. revenue. Uh, yeah, they have C they have CNN. Uh, they have uh, Tons of headline ad news. Revenue. Yeah, headline news. Well, not, it's, it does okay, but it doesn't do great. Uh, they're going to make the biggest money off of HBO now. HBO, no, no, the they're not because the the ad revenue space is uh, something about what we already have. I don't remember what it was, millions or billions or something like that. It was going to be we're going from seventy five to seven hundred and fifty, like million billion, uh, ad spaces that we're going to be able to sell. Yeah. So it's all about the ad revenue that they're going to be able to get from buying them. Yeah, but here's the thing. Okay. And I'm just saying this for argument's sake. And this is not now. This is down the road, okay? But the who is the biggest uh, comp competitor to HBO? I'd say at this Showtime? point, no, I'd say, well, not really. The biggest competitor, the one that they're that they're probably afraid of and doing everything they can to Disney? stave off, is Netflix. Now, yeah. now, okay. So now you own cable companies across the country. You you own carriage and now there's no net neutrality and you say Netflix is my competitor. How do I put an arrow in their foot? Well, maybe we just don't carry them or they sl we slow the service down or we charge them more for being on our system. That's what my fear is, and it may not happen tomorrow and it may not happen two years from now, but if you look at the landscape, say five years from now, a lot of this might be a distinct possibility. But see, and that's where I think it's kind of bullshit because, you know, what I think AT&T is already going to do is say, if you buy our service, we'll give you HBO for free. So that's going to encourage you to go with their internet, go with their this or that. And they're going to sit there and still sell what they would sell it for before to Comcast or Spectrum or whoever well, wasn't else. AT &T but already if you were to decide to get AT&T, you'd get it for free. Wasn't AT&T already giving away HBO as part of their package or, you know, no. if you started subscribing no. with them? No? It, they had something, I think, if it, you had their, you bought their uh, unlimited data, yeah. I think they gave you HBO for free. Yeah, that was it. But uh, just like Comcast right now is giving away Netflix for free for the first year. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's all about incentives in yeah. order to buy my product. Uh, you know, I'll give you my product, or I'll give you this if you buy my product. Jeff? Yeah, I, I was going to say the same thing, which is they, all these deals are based on the first year. Yeah. And the second year, nobody tells you what the second year might cost you. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. Well, with, yeah. with Fios, I know what my first two years are. Okay. Uh, okay. And, and, and the one thing I can do with FiOS is if all of a sudden at the end of two years they want to jack up my rates by, say, a third or something like that, I'll just say, okay, well, I'll go over to Spectrum, you know. Uh, and they'll probably just say, okay, we'll keep things the way they are, you know. And that's what I'm telling you, coming in the near future, you know, you're looking at, I think, at a lot of hardwired stuff. And it's not going to be hardwired stuff. In the near future, I think you're going to be dealing with a lot of cell cellular data, and it's, it's going to the price on it is going to come down, and the quality of it is going to go up. So there's going to be a lot more competition, and I think that's where some of these larger companies are looking at right now is it's going to be a lot more larger competition. So you got to do what you can do in order to offer a better product for your customer in order yeah. to give them better service. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, but I mean, I and, and you were talking the other day. You were talking about becoming monopol monopolies. You know, how is an internet company buying? You know, a, a broadcast company. They're two separate things. It's not a monopoly. Yeah. Oh, Tom, turn on a light somewhere. You're like in the dark now. The sun is looks going like he's now. in a Vietnam <laughs> yeah. concentration yeah. camp. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, he looks like a poor Mexican kid, you know, who's in the, 
you know, we'll give you a thermal. Hey, that's me. We'll give you a thermal blanket, and it'll look fine. You'll look terrific. There we go. Uh, yeah, now we can see it. Uh, no, all I'm saying is, all these things are possible that I'm talking about, Jason. Uh, whether it will happen immediately or whether it will happen at all, I don't know. But we certainly have allowed. Uh, the uh, you know we've done the Pandora's box thing and opened up the evils of the world to come flying out and and bite us in you the. You know hands. what I'm scared of, Alex? What? I'm afraid that everything is going to be a la carte. Where all the all the networks. Well, that is that is the thing that's really something to look crazy. forward to. What happens is you have Netflix now. Netflix went out and they bought up a lot of Disney product and stuff and were running it. But they're not going to be able to have it, and the, the, they're not going to be able to have the Marvel movies and the Star Wars movies in about another year because Disney's starting their own pay channel. And I think that's where they're going to screw themselves. You know, at, at least you can make some money if you sell it to the other, you know, broadcasters or whatever who's going to put your yeah. stuff out there. You can make some money off it that way. If you sit there and say, no, you can't air my product. You're, you lost that revenue. You know something, was, it, and I have to remember this because this goes back a long way, but I remember there was a time when HBO started that uh, they, they were owned by uh, Time Life, uh, and they were told uh, that they had to divest themselves of doing of owning any production companies. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember what the story was, but the, the cable companies could not own the product, uh, the, the, the um, what, what's, what, I'm, what, I'm, what are the words I'm looking for, could not own the nature of the product. In other words, they couldn't own, you, if you were a cable company, you couldn't own a movie company, okay? Oh, okay. Because oh. you would then be producing movies and you wouldn't be, but now that seems to be the order of the day. They've gone wild, you know. Uh, in fact, well, that would just be like saying if you're a car company, you can't own a steel company. Is that right to be able to do or no? Uh, uh, say that again. If you're an auto manufacturer, you can't own a steel company that you're buying your your parts from. Uh, you know, uh, Jeff, that are made Jeff, of steel. Jeff has an answer on that. Oh, turn on your turn on your microphone, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, Ford always uh, produced their own steel. From day one, River Rouge. Yeah. Dearborn, Michigan. Okay. So I assume they're still doing it. Yeah. But I, I'm trying to remember what the thing was that they made the cable companies do and said you, you can't, there was a big suit by a movie company against the ca uh, cable outfit saying, you know, you, you're not taking my movies because you're running your own that you've made. Blah 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 blah, and they made some ruling about that, but that seems to have gone by the wayside now. All you I'm know, saying, and, and I agree to a point. Like you know, if AT and T buys Time Warner and says nobody else can show anything of Time Warner, you yeah. know, yeah, that's a bunch of bullshit. But right at the same time, where they were arguing with the uh, Justice Department about it, they're saying, you know, we'll have a third party, you know, person in there to sit there and you know set the rates. To Comcast or Spectrum or whoever else to, that will sell our, you know, I, I feel our content. I feel very deficient right now because this case was a big one with HBO and Time Life, who owned HBO, and the fact that they had to make sure that they weren't going to be doing certain things. And I can't remember what it was, but it had to do with this kind of thing, which, of course, now, hey, I, you know, AT and T can can say if they want to <laughs> oh well we're just not we're, if if netflix wants to be on at&t since they amount to 60 percent of the evening bandwidth which they do in the united states um we want them to pay more you know but of course hbo doesn't have to pay anything because we own hbo so that then becomes a real you know question of of of, of antitrust i would think you know that sort of thing happens, but who knows? That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when HBO first came out, we we were able we never had cable in Queens, but we were able to get HBO. We had to put a tripod. HBO came and put a tripod on the roof that pointed to the, I think the Empire State Building. And when we had HBO, I was like, oh my god! I would do it. I feel like I watch Rock. It was like the best thing ever. I would get the little book in the mail, 
you like what the result for that model. You, it was like fantastic. Do you, do you know where it started? Cable, the first uh, if HBO started the first. Place. Was that James Dolan's father, Alex? No, no, Cable, no? no, no, no. HBO was always owned by Time Incorporated. Okay. Okay, but they they started the service I think in Reading, Pennsylvania, as a test. Really? And I remember the second place they came was New York, and I was one of the first subscribers to. Oh, you had it. You had it on cable in the city. Yep. Yep. Oh, so we never had cable. We only cable had 13, box. we had 26 channels on our cable box. Oh my God, that's a lot. 26 channels, and uh, yeah, that was a lot. We were living big time. Everything mm. uh, uh, after th uh, 13, it went from 2 to 13, and then it went A, B, C, D, blah, 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 blah. And uh, HBO, I can't remember, It was maybe it was Channel H, I don't know. So you had Manhattan Cable, that was like a treat. Forget it, you were living a lot. We, I was dying for cable. Well, it, uh, what happened was is that uh, the, uh, the, the guys who came to my door and sold me cable was the guy, and I'm trying to remember his name right now. Uh, um, I, 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 my mind is really fucked tonight. I don't know why. But uh, you're old. You remember? Oh, <laughs> shut the fuck up. All right. <laughs> sure. um, I'll remember his name. If I can remember the nickname, I can remember his name. But anyway... He became David Letterman's producer, oh. producer of the David Letterman show. Uh, and he and a guy by the name of Stu Smiley, who became the head of Showtime, came to my door selling me cable. That's fucking funny. And, and, and I met up with him. Uh, and, uh, uh, Did you get free installation out of and, and he said, in those days, he said, I want to thank you. And I said, for what? He said, most of the boxes we sold to people in those days was because of Midnight Blue. Wow, you to watch you know, and you made me a lot of money in those days. Not as much as I'm making with Dave now, but you know. But still. Uh, yes. What were you going to say, Jason? So, sidetrack because you said David Letterman. Yeah. And I was watching on Netflix his interview that he did with Howard Stern. Yeah. And he was talking about people who influenced him in radio. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned somebody. I forget uh, Bob something. Bob Grant. And out in New York, he was conservative. And he was like, screw you, you're too young, you don't know what you're talking about, and hung up on him. And when he, when he's to been me, at... it kind of sounded like you describing yourself and stuff that you played. Was he like that too, or was he no. basically quoting you? Uh, every uh, What I've heard him tell people is that the two people who influenced him the most in radio, and you see, I mean... The motherfucker can't even do it when Letterman's interviewing him. Uh, was Joe, uh, uh, not uh, Joe Pine, uh, Bob Grant, and and me. And uh, so he only mentioned Bob Grant, right? But he said that he was a conservative. Yes, talk he, show was. Host he was. He right. was. Who you know would say you're too young, you don't know what you're talking about, screw you, and hung up. Yeah. On him. Well, that, and that sounded to me how you were doing the good guys and motherfuckers or whatever yeah, no uh, they, no but he did listen to me and and it, he is is quoted in one book as me being one of his influences along with bob grant but i'm saying did bob grant was he like that too or no uh, bob bob was a he, it's very strange bob was a friend of mine uh, we worked at wmca together in the old days and he would do the show after mine, and he was kind of conservative, but you know, you didn't really think it in, of it in terms of conservative versus liberal. You know, it wasn't that kind of thing. Uh, but you had different political opinions, and we would do our crossover between the shows, yelling and screaming at each other, and calling you know, calling each other out, and things like that. And of course, off the air, we we liked each other. We we enjoyed each other's company. In fact, towards the end of his life, I appeared on his show at WOR. Um, no, I, I didn't appear on his show. I met up with him at WOR, and we just we, he was so happy to see me. Uh, but uh, he was he was a conservative talk show host, and he was in your face. He was that kind, right? You know, and of course, I'm the hippy dippy weatherman with my little uh, with my long hair and my Mm -hmm. My my, uh, uh, you know, uh, demeanor of peace and love, and uh, it uh, you know it was, it was two different things. But no, was, uh, you know, boy, I can't even speak the English language tonight. I'm having a stroke. I think that's what it is. Yes, uh, Tom. 
Well, you mentioned Joe Pine and in uh, I can't yeah, Joe see Pine. That. I ac accidentally said Joe Pine. I meant Bob Grant. Yeah, but I mean Bob Grant. We sort of Joe Pine opened the way for Bob Grant because, as I remember, yes, Bob had actually started in Los Angeles. Yes. Yeah. So uh, did Bob so Grant start? Pine so, paved did, the way for him. Uh, did he start in Los Angeles? I'm trying to remember. I remember him in Los Angeles. Because I mean, the first time I ever met up with him, he came to work at WMCA. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's where I got to know him. And yeah, it, well, about the same time Pine was, and that was in the mid '60s. Yeah, yeah. But you know, but uh, fuck Howard. You know, I mean, um, uh, he, he looks like he, he had a facelift too. He, oh, you know, he, how much he bitched about people having facelifts. And oh, shit. He's, 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 one more, <laughs> one more facelift. He's going to have a beard. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he. Um, uh, I, you know, the trouble with Howard is, is that he has always denied my influence except to people privately. Okay. Uh, there's one guy I know who's a very important consultant, and he was wor working with Howard, and Howard told him that I was a major influence on him. So why would you think that is? That and then when I was out of work at Sirius, I tried to get a job on, on Howard's, have my show moved over to Howard's stations, which he ran, and he wouldn't give me the time of day. You know. So fuck, fuck him. No. <laughs> fuck him. Yeah. Uh, he stole my act, okay? I'll say that right now. <laughs> In fact, it's funny. He, he, I had two different acts. I did this thing called Midnight Blue, which was a sex show on cable, and then I did my radio show. And what he did is I never thought combine the radio show with the sex show. And that's exactly what he did. You mm -hmm. know. So I, I just, you know, I, I, I wish I could have a lot of respect for him, but I don't. You know. And uh, the only interview of Letterman's I haven't watched is the one he did with Howard. I, it was actually pretty good because they actually did talk about, like, mental, you know, health and uh, having anxiety and stuff like that and I thought it was actually a pretty decent interview yeah. uh, I like the one he did with uh, Jay-Z uh, I, oh, I, that that I thought that was completely out of out of Letterman's wheelhouse and he did a really good job of it so you know uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember who his producer was uh, boy I just found the name Bob Morton uh Morty, as we used to call him. And, and Morty came to my door with Stu Smiley, who later became the head of Showtime, uh, or comedy at Showtime. And uh, he, uh, they, they sold me cable. That's how they were making a living for a while. And they said it was Midnight Blue and Chinese programming. They could sell cable with Chinese <laughs> programming, too. <laughs> they had a Chinese channel, so they go down to Chinatown. They sell a lot of boxes to Chinatown. Yeah. <laughs> I usually when we had HBO, it was like real. Yeah, it was the yeah. best. So, um, um, uh, I, I, oh, I had a piece of news here. Hold on a second. This is. Uh, you hear about Peter Fonda? Oh, he, oh, he, I'm gonna hear you say. Oh yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the like, United States Secret fine. Service has been alerted in response to a tweet by actor Peter Fonda who said Baron Trump, President Trump's youngest son, should be separated from his mother and put in a cage with pedophiles. <gasps> oh, my God. He's going crazy. No, he's not going crazy. He's making, he's, he's, he's making a comment on what's going on with the Mexicans, you know, and with the South Americans. Um, the tweet from Fonda, which has since been deleted, they always delete them. <laughs> okay. Somehow people feel, I can do a tweet, and if it doesn't go over, I'll delete it, and it won't be a problem. Nobody will know. Reportedly America. says we should rip Baron Trump from his mother's arms and put him in a cage with pedophiles and see if mother will stand up against the giant a-hole she's married to. <laughs> oh. 90 million people in the streets on the same weekend in the country? Fuck. CNN reports First Lady Melania Trump's communications director Stephanie Grisham called the tweet Sick and irresponsible. What are they calling what's going on with these kids, right? Adding the Secret yeah, Service has been true. notified. A Secret Service spokesman said the agency is aware of the tweet but declined to comment. Listen, you know, the Secret Service 
ha- it ha- it literally has been wasting their time a lot. Uh, I just found out, I saw an interview with Kathy Griffin. Now, you remember she held up the bloody yeah, head yeah. of Donald Trump, you know. And, of course, then she was banned from every TV show known to mankind, and she was made a pariah for a certain amount of time. Slowly she's been making a comeback, so she's doing an interview, and she said that she was being followed by the Secret Service and she was being listed as a dangerous person to the president. Oh. <laughs> now, you know, uh, l- look, I mean, uh, uh, Kathy Griffin's a cunt. There's no question in my <laughs> mind about it. I've, I've known the woman and she is, yeah. right? But uh, be that as it may, the one thing she isn't is dangerous, you know, to anybody. <laughs> That's what we're wasting the taxpayers' money on. They trail on that. Huh? <laughs> Just like those cars coming in from Canada are a terrorist threat. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Hey, by the way, good going, Canada. Pot is legal in Canada now. Oh, yeah, they legalized Yes, Tom. Yeah, you actually reminded me of something else that I found amusing in the news. Uh, you know, our uh, 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 Homeland Security uh, Secretary. Uh, Nielsen. Uh, Nielsen. Well, anyway, uh, who, you know, basically stood up and lied before the press and and stood by uh, by Trump as 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 he signed the uh, the executive order. Right. Uh, but but anyway, it turns out that she went to a Mexican restaurant <laughs> oh, really? and a whole bunch of people found out and they just started heckling her like crazy. It was I've heard the audio. It was it's so funny. I mean, talk about justice. <laughs> um, Real justice. Um, let's see. Here. I was watching Hannity earlier just for a laugh because uh, he just he just grates on me. But anyway, the, he, Hannity was talking about where is Hillary Clinton? Where is everybody saying me too, me too? They can't do that to Christy Nielsen. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, I, there were a lot of people saying that. Melania Trump should have gone down and seen the kids, you know. And Obama and, should have went, maybe. Uh, well, I, was, I, you know, I think Obama. Here's here's what Obama's trying to do, and I understand it. You know, when you're an ex-president, you just don't comment on the current president. Uh, and so he's tried to remain kind of not impartial, but just non-judgmental. About well, anything Trump comments Trump on him all the time. I know, and it must be killing him. But he's he, ah, he's kill me. He's, he's 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 trying to have his dignity. Yes, Tom. Well, actually, U.S. senators are trying to go down there. They won't let him in. You know, like uh, Nelson oh, yeah. in in Florida. Right. They're trying to go in and, and, and visit these detention centers. And uh, I was it ICE or or Homeland Security released a uh, uh, a uh, a memo. You know. You know, on the restrictions, they have to give them two weeks' notice. They can't talk to the children. They can't. It's uh, it's just a bunch of nonsense. Well, I I don't understand. Okay, it it makes no sense to me uh, why uh, a, a a senator or a congressman can't go into those camps, or why a news person can't go into those camps and see them. If you if you're, you haven't got anything because to hide. Because they might expose the injuries that are happening to these kids when they're fucking being ripped away from their parents. Oh, listen, just that in and of itself is psychologically damaging for these kids. It, there, there was doctors or whatever, some do- uh, type of doctor's association or something that came out and said, you need to stop this because this is physically and mentally damaging people you know it's the horrible thing that they're doing and and, you know just sit there and try to blame this on democrats for oh this is their rule that they put in place and blah 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 it isn't isn't, no it is their misinterpretation of the laws that were put into effect they were never put into effect for that reason. One person signed something and it suddenly yeah. started happening two weeks ago no, the or laws, whatever. The laws that were put into place, so far as I've been able to ascertain this thing, because there's so much information running around about it, were mm-hmm. laws that, oddly enough, were meant to protect kids yes. from parents who might be criminal. Okay? That go to but, jail but, and but prison. But not, not some poor, you know, 
you know, uh, mother with three kids who who's trying to get across the border because she got a husband back in South America who's beating the shit out of her. You know, and who came to a legal point of entry into the country it, and it, said, "I'm seeking asylum." Right, right. That's and, what people and, and, and are so they not say, getting. Okay, but they say, "Well, you have to be put away until we can." Because uh, you're uh, a criminal. Because you came well, yeah, here and until said, we you're can make asylum, a determination. You're a criminal. Yeah, this is called zero tolerance. It's also called zero compassion. You know, and and that has no place in America. Just it, it's no not till now. You know, I have really started agreeing that people have been comparing Trump to Hitler. When you start doing stuff like that, I am sorry. I do have to start comparing you to Hitler. Mm -hmm. um, I I would say you've got a you got a good case there. You got a really good case there. Uh, you know, I mean, I just call him El Presidente now, and we can say it like it is. I mean, he's just, uh, it, it's amazing. I didn't think, you know, when he got elected president, I figured, oh, here we go. This is not going to be good. I didn't figure it was going to get this bad. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't think it was going to get this bad. Um, and, uh, 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 it is just, it, you know, when you, when you see the rest of the world is reacting to these. Uh, Theresa May in, in Parliament today was railing against the United States for what they're doing to the, what we're doing to these kids. We look terrible. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? Uh, and, and, and I don't care about optics. It never, it never was important to me. But I do think that, you know, we had a reputation as being a pretty fair country. Uh, and I can't think of anybody, even 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 Bush didn't get us in this bad a situation with the rest of the world. Instead, mm -hmm. now the rest of the world are our enemies, for crying out loud. Yes, Tom. Well, I'm afraid to say that I was actually expecting what we're getting. I knew it was going to happen uh, because he's, he, he's both incompetent and corrupt, as I've said before. And... On top of that, when people were saying, well, he'll change once he gets it. No. No. He won't change. He, he hasn't changed. It. I mean, at his age, he's not going to change. And by the way, Alex, you still think he might be a closet liberal? <laughs> yeah. However, that was all. Uh, well, you know, maybe you know he's something. A closet liberal. Uh, maybe things will be work out real nice when he's elected. Nah. I think he's politically agnostic. No, I, I don't. Think, I don't no, think he. I think he's I, politically a fascist. fascist. You know, I. I think he is into the politics of Trump. Anything is good for Trump. You know, he, he's he's doing several things. Number number one, he's trying to make himself rich while he's in office. That's yeah, for, for starters. Corruption. Okay, but he also is trying to keep himself out of jail. I think that if Donald Trump hadn't won the presidency, or he didn't win the nomination, didn't run, he'd be in jail by now. He'd be up on indicted on any number of things, and that this was a way for him to stay out of jail. Does that make sense? I don't know. You got this thing with the with the uh, charitable uh, uh, foundation here going on, which that alone could wind him up and have him wind up in jail. But because he's president of the United States, he can't touch him. Yeah. Well, I mean, if. Another way of looking at it is he probably wouldn't have called so much attention to himself as he, if he hadn't gotten, gotten elected president. So, I mean, you know, just the fact now, this, that now... This, well, this whole thing with the charitable contribution thing has been going on for several years that they've been investigating this. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, $10,000 went to <laughs> a portrait of him for Mar-a-Lago, and that's considered a charitable contribution? <laughs> of himself? Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean... Somebody bought that. No, he had it painted. He have you he seen? Bought, it? He had himself painted. <laughs> he had it painted. Paid ten thousand dollars to have it done, oh. and then put it up at Mar-a-Lago, and it came out of the foundation's uh, money. Who does the foundation? He, it, looks so like, it looks I mean, like it looks like the foundation. The foundation was a reservoir for money for them. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah. they, they would use, you know, and, I, and somebody said, well, well, actually, the foundation spent more money than it made. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that's really bad thievery. You know, <laughs> I mean, you're really a bad thief if you can't make money off of it. I mean, this is, of course, then again, this is the same guy who could, 
lose money running a casino. When did you ever hear of that happening? He must be pissed now because now it's it's legal to bet the sports in uh in Atlantic City and he has no casino. <laughs> yeah. Well, what well, I'll tell you though, what Atlantic City didn't count on were like all the Indian casinos that started coming yeah, up. Yeah, nice. So too. that every state ha now has casinos. You have casinos in Texas, don't you, Scott? No, we do not. Really? No. Oh, no. What happened down there? Don't they have, have uh, they have some racetracks, but I think that went belly up too. But I'm not sure. But you don't you don't have any Indians down there, or claiming that their lands they can do no, what they want. All the Indians. No, they don't have any Indian <laughs> casinos down there. Seven <laughs> Eleven. Yeah, we 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 got the. Dothead type, not the feather type. Uh, 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 not, uh, what we used to say, Mumbai, not uh, not Wahoo. Yeah. Dot feather. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I, it's just uh, um, I I I just think that it's uh, yeah. I mean, Tom, you, you expected it to be this bad. I yeah. just figured, you know, I I believed in America in a certain way that no matter who you put into office, nobody could truly fuck this com this country enough in four years. All right, to to ruin it. But I think this guy has been doing it. Oh yeah, you know. And I don't right. care if if the next president of the United States is God, you know, they won't trust America for years. Hey, I'm to not come. running next election. You're not running next election. No. You said God. So. Yeah. Oh. Well, the devil ran and won. Uh, he, he, uh, you know, it's 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 terrible. It's and I'm glad Phil isn't here because Phil would go, oh, wah wah wah. You know, you're you're, you know, you're 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 paranoid about everything. But no, I'm not paranoid about everything. Oh, look what's happening. This guy is fucking us over. And uh, even my stock. Stocks are down because of him. Hey, dude, I've lost, since the beginning of this year, I've lost over $10,000 in my 401k. Really? Really? Uh, I definitely. lost, I have a 401, uh, I have I have two things. I have a Vanguard account, and then I have a 401k from SiriusXM. Now, it has done very well, believe it or not. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, it. Uh, I started out, it was, uh, I had like, like 4,000 shares or something that were fully vested to me. And I had to sell some of it off every year because that's part of the rules. But I have about 3,500 shares, and that used to be worth when I first got it, man, maybe $8,000, and that's worth about $25,000. Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah. the other stock, the Vanguard, has gone down. Not as badly as you would imagine, but it has gone down. Now, I don't know where he thinks that uh, it, it the the world is so wonderful right now and that we're we're just on top of the world i mean we are the country is financially in, in good shape but it has nothing to do with him look ray is using his cell phone to talk to us hello ray ray well, that's what happens when you use the telephone a cell phone to call us uh ray there he is yeah i'm here yeah you're there where are you at home where, where are you? Oh, boy, the bandwidth is terrible. Can you move that phone somewhere else? It says, I'll go outside. I'll go outside. Maybe it's better. Yeah. Could be. Could be. Where are you at home? Yeah. No, I'm at the gym. You're at the gym? Yeah. You're doing 20 minutes on the bike? I just did, I just, like, 40 minutes, and then... I looked on here and I saw Phil wasn't on here, so I had to I had to come on. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, you, you do. I just couldn't help it. I was like, oh God, I, I can't resist. So, so you do you do forty minutes on the bike? Yeah, yeah, and then I'm gonna go lift some weights. I I twenty. I, I do I do twenty five minutes. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and, and what 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 did what, you just say, Jason? Pussy. <clears throat> What do you mean, pussy? What are you doing on that pussy. fucking bike? You're not going anywhere. You know, it's better than nothing. It's like I feel like I feel like I'm a fucking gerbil and there's a wheel and I'm just you know, 
Yeah, yeah and it's going nowhere, but somehow I feel yeah. I'm having fun. Right? I'm not I'm even just having glad fun. That after all these years, you finally started using the gym membership that you've been paying for to not even go there. Well, I'm, they're lo they're losing money now because because I pay fifteen bucks a month, and I've already gone at least twenty times this month. Fifteen bucks a month is cheap. Oh yeah, yeah. Because but they, they what they count on it is who I was for a while. The guy who pays fifteen dollars oh, a month forgets I'm paying them fifteen dollars a month. I think they're still counting on the guy you are now who goes for twenty minutes a day. <laughs> no, actually, I go and I do twenty-five minutes on the cycle. Gee, Jason, why don't you pat me on the back and say good going, old man? You know. I will. I will, Alex. It's good because most most people don't do shit. So yeah. that's good. Yeah, but I they do that. Do and hey, then, I'm and not going to pat you on the back. I'm going to be the one to push you to say go more. I, I, I then I spend about 15 minutes on the uh, the the implements of torture, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and I do a thing for my legs, and yeah. uh, because I'm trying to help with the torn meniscus, but it seems to be hurting it rather than helping it. And let's see, what yep. else do I do? I, uh, I I do a few of these, and I do a few of these, and I, about a hundred of those of uh, the crunches. Hey, you know, one thing you should be doing with your torn meniscus, not your torn meniscus, but your sciatica, you know, the one thing, it's not a machine you lift weights on, but you'll sit there and you'll hang by your elbows and hold on to the things. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can lift your knees up. Uh, yeah, so I, 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 I did, I did like that. This. I did that the other day for a couple of, a couple of reps because I used to do that a lot. That's something That's you good. should probably be doing a lot right now because the house builds your core muscles yeah. in your back. Well, you know, hey, I'm, hey, yeah. Hey, Alex, when I had sciatica really bad years ago, I don't I know if what I, by the way, but I don't know if what I have is sciatica. Okay, go ahead. Uh, oh, well, I got like the this uh, the trainers used to use Macau. They were these heat packs that you put in boiling water and there's sand inside and yeah. you wrap them in a towel and you put it there. Oh, my God. It helped. Like, oh, it helped my sciatica so much. Really? Uh, well, I yeah, don't know you if put I it right, you put it up high I, on your spine, like in your lower back. You know, I don't know that's that where it all starts. I don't know that I have sciatica, but one of the things of sciatica oh. is numb feet. OK, your feet tingling and so on. But you don't have pain, though? Uh, I don't have pain shooting. I have pain in the feet sometimes. Uh, I see. But I don't probably have... Not so, but it, probably it, not sciatica, then. Well, no, it could yeah, be so because a sciatica, yeah. it can go directly to the feet and bypass the oh. leg altogether. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Okay. But I'm oh, going okay. to a neurologist yeah. in a couple of weeks and... Uh, go uh, to a I'll chiropractor. Go. I'm going uh, to a neurologist first. To crack your back. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, look, uh, you know, I... I, I will probably go to a chiropractor as well. Uh, and that's only because I then don't want you giving me a bad time, Jason, because I think years later. I think chiropractic is full of shit. You know? <laughs> yeah. I go to an upper cervical problem. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. We just lost him. We just right. lost him. Uh, but, but like all the other stuff where they just crack your back. Oh, yeah. That's just all temporary shit. Yeah. Yeah, I did that for years. Didn't do anything. Yeah, except make my back too loose. Well, uh, you know what I want. You know time. what I want. This is what I want out of this stuff. Network. This this neurologist. Drugs. Okay. <laughs> drugs. <laughs> oh, he'll give you drugs. Give me the drugs that will stop the tingling and the hurting in the feet. That's all I care about. Uh, but it won't. It'll just make it. Kind of disappear. That's fine. Instead. That's well, fine. Why I don't do you want to cover the symptom instead oh, of oh, fixing well, it? Uh, because I'm not going to fix it with Dr. Crackerback. You, you might not be able to fix it. Yeah. <laughs> really what? My, I'm my really dad, what? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, yes, Ray. What? It's just neuro. It's just neuropathy. Yeah, he's a little. My dad's a little older than you. Yeah. And he has that, and it's just neuropathy in his feet, just from nerve damage from years and years and years of walking. Yeah. So they, no, it has nothing. And there's they, nothing you can do about it. And they give him some pills to kind of ease it up, right? If he wants to take them, yeah. If yeah. he would lose weight, it would help too. Well, I mean, but, I, um, I've lost weight, but. Yeah. Uh, I but think it's neuropathy. He just has neuropathy. It has nothing to do with his back, and there's nothing they can really do about it. Well, I have neuropathy, and I think it could be it could be a cross. You can compress a nerve, and it, it'll do this sort of thing, you know. Yeah. And so it, everybody's different. You never know. Right. So I, I, I mean, I'm yeah. not going to try and figure out what it is now. Let this doctor figure it out for me. You know. 
Yeah. And give yeah. me, you know, and, and I will, yes, I will go to the chiropractor, uh, Dr. Crackaback, uh, when I get a chance, Jason. When? You've been talking about this for years. Well, I, I don't well, know why you, go to the neuropathy. Why are you so the big on, uh, on, 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 uh, on, on chiropractors? Because it, 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 if, especially with sciatica, it's a nerve in your back. But I don't know that and it's sciatica. And the chiropractor Wait, can adjust that. I don't know that it, it's That's si- actually probably the cheaper and safer way to go. I don't, instead of taking poisonous hey, pills that you're putting it, in it, your body. It's, it's not cheaper for me because I have great health insurance that takes care of almost 100% of everything that happens to me. Including a chiropractor. No. No. It includes so many chiropractic visits a year, right? I have no idea. Uh, I'd but, go to physical therapy before I went to a chiropractor. Yeah, I, I I went to physical therapy for my torn meniscus, and they paid and for. And that helped, right? Uh, yeah, it helped, sure. But you know what I found? I found that it helped, but uh, it didn't get as. It, it eventually started getting better and better on its own without me even exercising. You know, that's uh, what a meniscus will do. Mine just got worse and worse. I had to, I had to have it operated on and cut out. Well, our old friend, but, our uh, old friend uh, yeah. uh, uh, Albert Reynoso, uh, when I was working with him at Sirius, uh, he had to take a week off because he had a torn meniscus operated on, and uh, he was walking around limping for quite a while until it got uh, got fixed and worked. Mine isn't that bad that they feel they have to operate on it. Here we go, medicine again. Welcome to Alex's waiting room. So I I have kind of an issue too, like the side of my left calf or thigh is going numb. And I'm going to the doctor tomorrow about it. What what kind of doctor? My regular family doctor. You know what he's going to do? He's going to send you to a neurologist. He's going to send you to a neurologist. Oh, well, either probably say I need an MRI to find out what's wrong because it's it's either it's a pinched nerve in my back, or you know which maybe I need to go to a chiropractor for. Oh, maybe you could or, go to a neurologist and get it fixed once and for all and get some great drugs. Yeah, drugs ain't gonna fix. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, you know, but here here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, I I I think that probably whatever it is that's wrong with me. Uh, all I want to have it uh, do is make it less of a grief to me, you know, because it happens basically when I lie down. So I'm going to sleep every night. My toes are hurting, you know, so I need to, yeah. I need to have it taken care of. Um, Maybe you got a shitty bed. No, it's not a shitty bed. You know, <laughs> I, I heard it has brown spots on it, so I think it might be a shitty bed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, he was being. Uh, yeah. It's not. A, it's not. A, <laughs> it's not a, but uh, I, I read that on Facebook, actually. <laughs> girlfriend has a chiropractor for me, ready to go. I have to go get girlfriend a. Uh, has a brown spot on her bed too, right? What? So does a girlfriend have a brown spot in her bed? No, no. <laughs> I thought you were giving her some shit about there's like, oh, you got this brown spot in your bed. Oh, that's she, right, you were. Ago. No, she had a spot on her bed. She always complains about the fact don't eat anything in this room because you spill stuff and it goes on. And she and she has it has a white. We have a white, com, not comforter, but you know, duvet. Whatever it is, I don't know. It's white. <laughs> it's white. And she says, because you get you get food all over, because you drop food, you know. And then I go over and I look at her side of the bed, and there's this big fucking stain there from something that she, you know, you know. And while her farts are lethal, I don't think they put a stain on the bed. <laughs> oh, yeah, they, they do. They can. That's the other thing. You know where my marriage is really going bad? She just feels she can fart at will now. You know, all the days of romance, of... Uh, uh, of oops, that, oops! I shouldn't do that. You know, uh, uh, no. She used, in fact, when she used to fart, she would actually spray orange spray. Now she doesn't even give a shit. I'm surprised she doesn't light a fucking match. <laughs> she sprayed orange spray out her ass. No. She, oh, you mean to cover up the smell? To cover okay. up the smell. Yeah, but now she yeah, doesn't yeah. even care about that no longer. Uh, By yeah. the way, I want to tell you the viewership tonight. <laughs> At one point, went up higher than it's gone in a long time. <laughs> so, feel uh, free night. 
fill-free night. There's something about it being a fill-free night. Yeah. 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 I uh, think it's just because I'm here. So all how, the ladies uh, want to see me. So when you do, you, do you work? Gun. You look like you work out regularly, don't you, Jason? No. No. Not at all. Well, how come you look gotta, so? Huh? I gotta go finish my workout. So, uh, I have fun. Okay, go back to the hamster wheel. Yeah, I'm going to go work on the torture machines for a while. Oh, you're going to do the torture machines for a while? Yeah, okay. torture machines okay. now, yeah. Do a couple of reps for uh, me. I'll, I'll... I will. Okay. okay. Ray Bye. Renati, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> one of the citizen panel stars. Uh, there he is. There's his, there's his fa you know, his, uh, what do they call it? His picture for going in for auditions. Um, headshot. Headshot. I can't. I've. I'm. I have a complete. I. I don't know what it is tonight. I. I cannot, um, put together a coherent sentence. I have no idea what it is, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think I'm just tired. I didn't. I didn't get a lot. Of, I slept. Didn't get a lot of sleep last night for some reason. And then it's been hot as hell here. Yeah. It's yeah. The yeah. yeah. wind's hot enough Sunday too. Yeah. You guys gonna be getting a cool down? Cause we were. We were hot as hell for a while. Well, it, um, like it, today, I think our high was like seventy. That's what, Detroit. What's the so. temperature right now? It's it, it's it's going up. I think it's going down rather. It's at uh, no, it's at seventy five, which for nighttime is kind of warm here. But it's also uh, it also has a picture of the sun <laughs> being out. With, well, I guess uh, maybe they mean that's tomorrow. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, my, I'll take my trip to the Genius Bar tomorrow. Yeah. How how offensive is that? A Genius <laughs> Bar. Yeah. So anyway, let me ask you this, Scott. Uh, since you've been quiet tonight, and I want to draw you out. Uh, you live in Texas. You live in Plano, Texas. Now the politics down there is pretty much right wing, right? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. I mean, do it's, it's kind of like that, you know, that SG guy that calls in a lot. Yeah, that's like, that's like my next door neighbor, right? <laughs> really? It, I got to tell you my name. It's SG. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, it, it, that's the kind of people. I met nice people, nice people, but you don't want to go politics with them, you know? You know, I I I, I know that feeling uh, yeah. because sometimes you just don't want to talk politics with somebody because you will be turned off by what their politics are and then you judge them by their politics rather exactly. than exactly I, I i lost one of our the best families we'd known for a long time i met i made some comment about you know uh i don't i don't know i made a comment and they said oh you're for hillary or something like that and and it just like it was over you know? and, and they don't talk to you anymore well, I don't talk to them, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Because I, yeah, they're just, I, I, they, I just can't understand oh, Republicans. Okay. Let me, that's, that's let my me ask you guys a question. Because there are guys here, and, and some of us are older, but we can remember when we were younger. Uh, in the if you can't, I'll remind you. In the pursuit of sex, if you found out that a date you were going on with, out with, let's say, was a fan of Donald Trump's, would you still keep pursuing the sex with her? That night, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point I'm making. Uh, Jeff, in your day, would you have? Yes. See, we're, we, 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 we're hypocrites. Scott? No, I would not. You would not. How, uh, Tom, that, would we that have night to... you would not? We, we have to say uh, someone you were going after because you're... you're uh, well, of the well, of the gay persuasion, uh, would you if, if somebody suddenly you know you were hot for them and you were pursuing them, but you all of a sudden you found out they thought Trump was the greatest thing since sliced bread, what would you do? I'm talking to me. Yeah. Oh, I no way. Just no, just, just no way. In other words, politics would come before sex. Definitely. Yeah. How about you, yeah. Tony? Although you've never had sex, so why were we asking you? Well, if I had to answer the question, I would say, I'm getting to Alex's shoes then. I would say if I was Alex, I'm going to take your vote for it then. 
I would say if I know Alex like I do, he would he would do it because. Like Shecky says, he's had a million girlfriends, so I can see Alex going to bed with her and then kicking her to the curb the next morning. <laughs> well, I actually had something like that happen to me once. Really? Here we go. Where I was driving a woman, we're going back to my place for what was going to be a slam dunk fuck. Okay. <laughs> that wasn't politics, though. No, and she we're driving like, down. We're driving yeah. down Bowery here in New York, and you know what the Bowery is like. Oh yeah, yeah. You, especially, you, 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 especially well, back back in those days, it's guys with endless numbers of rags trying to clean your windshields every time you hit a stop sign. And uh, as we're driving down the street, she's saying, "You know the trouble with these," and she uses the N word. You know they're just taken Ooh. over everywhere. Oh. And, That's then, and then she she doesn't stop. She she's you know she's she's talking about Jews and blacks and things like that. Oh, and right. and 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 I know I've got a sure thing if I just get her home, but I've got a sure thing also if I make her just shut the fuck up because I'm not going to be able to get a hard on after this is over with. And finally, we're down at like the worst part of the Bowery with the most bums anywhere. Oh, and I God. said. Get out of the car. And and she said, what? I said, get the fuck out of the car. You don't talk about people that way. And I had, literally, I opened the door and I shoved her out and I took off and she was there with all the bums. So I oh know what God. I would do. Did she get a taxi? I have no idea. I never saw oh her again. God. That's funny. <laughs> and I went home and jerked off. And uh, that's going to be a rough area back then. Huh? Yeah. That's it was. Oh yeah. Then. Oh yeah. Tom. But see, that's what I'd fuck her. Yeah. I'd be like, "Hey, how you like a spick dick in your ass?" <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Tom. And, and she expressed any any Semitism? Did, did she know you were Jewish? No. Yeah. Did she know you were Jewish? <laughs> and she didn't much care. I mean, that it was great, it was just it was, she 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 never, it was just the, say, the, hey, by the way, I'm Jewish. <laughs> Well, no, she and see, and that's where you she, can be like, how do you like my Jew goo? It, her way of referring to Jews was the word kike, and her way of refer, for, referring to black people was nigger. Okay, I'll use the word. And I'm just sitting here, they're going, what? You know, I, I want to get laid. She's good. She was really good looking, too. I said, she's hot. But uh, how much do I want to get laid? You know, the, I, 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 I don't want this in my house. You know, it might, it might be bad for the cats. You know. Good for you, Alex. I was like, what is he doing so, now? So, so I have to say that what I would do probably is 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 out of the car, right? Wow. Well, you did the right thing. That had to be fun. Nah, because see, that's where I would have <laughs> said so afterwards, how you like my jew goo? <laughs> how you like my jew goo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. Uh, all over her face. Oh, uh, Oh, really? What was it? Uh, a paster like uh, what was it? Paster face like a cream donut. <laughs> uh, I can't even remember jokes tonight. Just now, what do you think Phil would have did, Alex? If that was him, Phil, I uh, Phil, uh, I don't think he would. He, listen, if he he lives in the Bay Area, if he wasn't going to fuck a liberal, he wouldn't be fucking anybody. You know? uh, he would just have a polite conversation and took them home and then offered to pay for something. Their dry cleaning to get his own uh, conservative stink off of him. <laughs> listen, let me ask you something, everybody. Recently, here in New York, they've reallocated a few channels uh, for uh, more news channels. But the more news channels they have on are like Newsmax and OAC. Oh, and, no. uh, and, and it's an overabundance, really, of right-wing news. And the one they just put on was The Blaze, which is Glenn Beck's channel. Right. Yeah. Now, i got to say something. And, and please don't suddenly decide you won't fuck me because of this. <laughs> but I watched J uh, Glenn Beck today. Have, and I haven't seen Glenn Beck much in years since he left Fox. And he was doing his radio show. Now, I disagree with the man. And I don't. And, and his politics aren't as dogmatic as they once were. But, gee, as one broadcaster to another, he's really good. He's really good at what he does. 
you know, he knows how to talk to a radio audience and communicate with them on one on one. And, and you're watching him do it as a TV show, but he's got a mic, got microphones there, and you know it's for the radio show that's syndicated that he's doing it. Mm -hmm. And I just hate myself for that. You know, when I say, you know, I, I hate the guy's politics, but he's really good at what he does. You know, I used to say that about Rush Limbaugh. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. think Rush is as good as he used to be, but in his heyday, I thought he was a terrific broadcaster. Didn't agree with the politics. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of a little akin to would you fuck a woman who was a Trump fan, you know? Uh, how, 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 how do you think of me now? Do you disrespect me for that? No, I mean... That's a, I can see you kicking around. No, no, that's not what we're talking oh, about. We're talking, oh, about, different. Oh. we're talking about Glenn Beck now. Stick with what we're talking oh, about. about that. <laughs> that's a the Boy, we got to get you laid. Uh, Jason. <laughs> I, I First, I just have to ask Alex, do your teeth come out? No. Oh, well, then no, I want to fuck you still after that. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever gone out with somebody who took their teeth out? No, I, I only pray that I can someday. <laughs> Years ago, Get I went out with gummer. a woman, and just before we started to have sex, she pulled two sets of dentures out of her mouth. I'd just be, I'd be coming in my pants because I'd be a good gummer. Really? I'm sorry. It was making me want to vomit, you know, because uh, lying there with this woman and seeing her teeth on the side table, you know, just it was not, you know. And, and by the way, you can take the youngest woman in the world, have her remove both, if she has nothing but dentures, remove the dentures, and she looks like an old lady. <laughs> She'd be looking hot well, to actually, me. Actually, <laughs> she kind of looks like a blobfish. You know, you've seen a blobfish. Uh, yes, t uh, Tom. Getting back to Glenn Beck, I, I don't listen to him, but um, he has uh, come out against Trump. Uh, which is good. Um, is he? Uh, when you been, were you when you were listening to him, did he spend a lot of time about Trump? Was it anything? No. It, the thing that I saw today that he was doing, he was talking about. He saw something on, I can't remember what TV network he was watching at the time, and there was a uh, there was a right winger on the show, and there was a left winger from some liberal cause on it. And he was just talking about how it was all predictable what either one was going to say, you know. Well, yeah. And he did this whole parody of it. And, and, and I, I kind of felt I couldn't get a good sense of where his politics were at this point, you know. Uh, he didn't come up with any stuff about Trump. Uh, but uh, I might watch him another day uh, tomorrow or something and see if he does. Yeah. I actually remember something else. Uh, years ago in The Daily Show, uh, John Stewart did a really brilliant impression of, of, of uh, Glenn Beck. It was just, he actually spent the whole show doing Glenn Beck. It was hysterical. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, he had a big blackboard and the whole the thing, which is what <laughs> Beck used to do. Uh, now, Beck, uh, I, I can't remember exactly what he did, but he recanted a lot of stuff recently. Said he was ashamed of some of the things he had said over the years, uh -huh. and that he was trying to atone for that. Uh, uh, he does all yeah. the shows out of Texas, Scott. He's up in Dallas. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, um, one of my daughter's friends used to work with him as an intern in uh, wherever he was broadcasting out of. Yeah. And now, and now this friend is a an executive assistant at Fox News. So yeah. She, 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 I don't know why my daughter's yeah. friends with her, but they like each other. Well, he seemed to have changed his act a little bit. But uh, the thing that I was impressed by, there are a couple of things I was impressed by. Number one, the way he would sit there and communicate with the audience, which was very personal. I mean, you, you, it sucked me in, okay? And I'm a hard guy to suck in on something like that. And then he also did live pitches, live commercial pitches for products. And they were just so well done that I was just I was in awe of him as one performer looking at another performer working and saying, hey, you know, that guy plays a great violin, you know. Uh, that's really how I was looking at it. It wasn't a matter of the content of the program, but rather his ability as a skilled communicator. 
Uh, and I was amazed. I hated myself afterwards, of course. Um, <laughs> um, but, uh, and I, I promise I will never listen to him again. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, you know, I just, I, I, I just think that, uh, we're living in times that are, you know, they say, well, you may you be cursed by living in interesting times. Well, we're being cursed, mm -hmm. uh, because it's far too interesting and boring at the same time. I can't tell you again, people are going to go, Oh, Alex, what are you turning right wing on us? I can't tell you how tired I am of watching MSNBC. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it is the same thing over and over again. Am I right, Scott? You seem to be agreeing well, with me. Well, that that's why I watch the Hannity once in a while, just to, just to get off a different topic. Yeah, but the trouble yeah. is you go over there and it's just as predictable. That's the point I'm making, you know? Well, it's always about Hillary's email still. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The emails. Benghazi. In Benghazi. Yeah, yes, Tom. Yeah. Deep state. As I said, I stopped watching all these cable networks almost a decade ago yeah. because they were so predictable. What really annoys me about uh, about MSNBC is the fact that well, when Fox came in, mm -hmm. they 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 were they they came on with the premise that that uh, the uh, news media that the media is biased liberal. Okay, and so they were going to offer themselves as the conservative alternative. They yeah. were going to be biased conservative mm. to balance out the the biased liberal. So what does MD, MSNBC do? It says, "Oh, we're coming on out. We're going to be biased liberal." Therefore, basically confirming the you know, just sort of like confirming the the premise well, that, what, that Fox News well, has is that that all news has a bias. What, this, what these news outfits are doing is they're playing to people. Uh, they're, they're, people can go to these various networks, depending on their opinion, and have their views validated. That's right. all it is. You know, so if you're, if you're a right-winger, you go over and watch Fox, and you're ensconced in this world that agrees with you. And if you're a left-winger, you go over to MSNBC, and you're ensconced in this world that agrees with you. I really wish I could go somewhere. I, CNN gets a little closer to the mark, but not not enough. Where where I feel I'm getting challenged, maybe about my opinions, you know, or I'm hearing everybody talk about it. There's a left winger, there's a right winger, and a nice even balance in the discussion. Or why do we even have to have these fucking pundits on anyway? Who are they? Exactly. Whoever exactly. made them, and I, right. I've, I've been on those shows as a pundit. I don't know shit. <laughs> right. And that's why I started GabNet. Well, I, no, I used to be on. Uh, <laughs> well, who's, who, who, who's the guy that comes on before Hannity? Uh, uh, Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson. I, I was on Tucker Carlson's show every Friday with another guy with a with a right right wing guy, and we would sit there arguing for about five minutes, and we were a weekly segment on the show. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so I was a pundit. Fuck me. I didn't know shit either. Right. That's the way I feel, and I'm sticking with it. Okay? You know, but uh, uh, in, the, in this day and age, it'd be nice if we had, had a nice, you know, someplace you could go and hear an interesting news discussion. And instead, when I'm at MSNBC, Hour after hour, it's the same story. You know, I mean, if I see one more, I mean, I, I, I'm so sorry for these children. And what we're doing to them is just abysmal. But every hour, do I have to see that same little kid standing there crying? You know, <laughs> I mean, can't you show me something else? Or can't you make a better argument than that? Than playing on our heartstrings? Well, uh, there's only like 2,500 of these kids that are in these prisons well the thing is that i think that it's important that we we make people want to feel sorry for these kids without having to play the what can we call it the uh show the little kid crying card you know that we that we immediately sound bite of the same kid no but we viscerally will respond to the fact that kids are being jailed okay and that we don't need to we don't need to constantly play on people's heartstrings they should be there automatically. And what we're doing is we're also... Uh, 
But that, look, divesting today, the, Trump signed something to stop doing what he started doing. And we're supposed to when pray. he said the only way that you could stop doing it is to get the Democrats to pass something well, because uh, they're the ones who started but it. But we're also supposed to think now that Trump is terrific. No, you know, I think anybody with a half a brain can realize, you know, he did this and it's something he started and he finally realized it's something that he could stop doing and it was the wrong thing to do. So he stopped finally doing it. I love it when they do. Sto- you know, and I will applaud. I love it when they stopping. do stories on the news about and now our person of the day and here's so and so helped his community by doing this, that or the other thing. And they make a big deal out of it. And I'm going, we shouldn't praise that. That should be the way everybody should be. You know, the exception should be the guy who doesn't, you know, and instead we're, oh, and -and so-and-so saved this uh, little kid from blah, blah. No, we should all have a morality that says we will not stand for this kind of shit. And to try and pull on heartstrings is trying to get a phony response out of people. Uh, Am I making sense or am I just? Yeah. I've lost all my sense of communication. I'll let uh, Glenn Beck come in here and you tell him. Uh, anyway, go ahead, <laughs> Jeff. I'm I'm very skeptic of any of these things that I see on TV these days. Yeah. About uh, you know, it's it's there's one little kid crying all the time. Well, you well, know, Mike, Mike, it's, my, my, it's my... not it's not that it bothers me that there's maybe a hundred of them, but maybe there's two hundred. I don't there's know. There's two thousand, twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. But here, right. but here's 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 the thing. Uh, are we not? Are these networks not, in a way, exploiting these kids for ratings, for advertising dollars, and so on? They're not saying that. Oh no, we're down here because we care. But why do they care? Why did the network send them down there? So they well, could Alex, get more if advertising. You don't broadcast it, if you're not exploiting it to a point. How are you going to make people aware of it? Well, if you're not aware of it, you're not going to care, just like it is in Germany. To begin with, they say that the Germans weren't aware of what they were doing to the Jews. Let me ask you a quick question here. What value is there for Lester Holt to go down there and do his show from there when he could talk to a reporter on the scene? The, that's kind of two different things. No, it you're, isn't. You're saying the, the saying host it. of the show going to do it instead of broadcasting. There's it. a tendency. It, 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 there's a there's a small thin line between exploitation. And, and helping people. And I think we've gone beyond helping the situation. I think, I, I think it's great that America has responded to this. Okay? And that's what's so important. That's what gives me hope in this country. Every time I'm, I'm depressed about, about Trump, the hope I have is that maybe people are good. The depressing part of it is, do you think Trump could get reelected? And my answer the thing is yes to both. Yes. And the answer is probably yes. And that's yeah. that. So what did we? What did America learn? Okay, you know, nobody wanted to be the bad person who wanted the little kids to be locked up. On the other hand, nobody wanted to be the person that was going to make the first step towards getting them out of there. So it, 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 it's just it. it, it I, I, I'm, I get very disappointed whenever I see all this stuff. So what have we learned here today? Well, we've learned that guys are dogs, okay? That they will keep their mouth shut politically if they think they can get laid. Uh, and uh, except Wait for Tom. Tom's, Scott, Tom's hey. true to himself. You know? And what about Scott? Scott? Yeah. No, well, Scott said, do you, he, oh, you said you wouldn't, right? Yeah. Right. Okay, well. Then we yeah, learned. Scott's a dog. We, he wants to get laid. We learned. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, he's been married too long. She has his testicles in a drawer somewhere. Right, Scott? Why, why even bother anymore, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, from the purse to the drawer. Well, I, I'm, I'm glad that I'm too old to really be in the dating pool because at, at least I've gotten my dignity back, you know? <laughs> anyway, let me start the theme here so we can uh, wrap this whole thing up. Hey, you know something? We've had a lot of people watching this tonight. I'm amazed by it. I uh, told you, because I'm here. Because you, yeah. you're here, or maybe somebody isn't. I don't know. I, I <laughs> you know. Who's not here? Huh? Who's not here? 
Uh, <laughs> Dave's I, not here. I, I don't Dave's know. not here. Dave's not here. Who's the sec- Who's the secret square? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I always used to love that on Hollywood Squares when he would point up at this, all these people up there and go, okay, pick a star. And not one player ever said, well, if you put one up there, I will. <laughs> you know, because I, I don't consider Charlie Weaver a star. Anyway, <laughs> that's it for tonight. Hey, thank you so much, Jason. You, you, you got out tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good time at the doctors and the dentists and all the things you got to do tomorrow. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for being with us this evening. Scott, as always, a pleasure. Tom, you too. I love it when we have you on. And uh, Tony, and maybe you guys will go over and say hello to uh, Jack Bishop, who's next with the intersection. Uh, give everybody a big wave goodbye so that we can uh, we can say goodbye. Just wave. Just wave. Yeah, that's it. You know how to do that. Okay, that that proves they're still they're still alive. Wait a minute, I'm trying to get to my picture. Thank you, everybody. Anyway, that's our uh, that's our citizens panel for tonight. Uh, Jack Bishop is next with the intersection at one o'clock in the morning. It's connections with uh, the people down in Florida, and it's a good little show. I hope you'll listen to it. And then we'll uh, be back here right after Damien and the Exchange at nine thirty. We'll be back here at ten o'clock. Eastern Daylight Time, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. <laughs>